partners today. What's your name? Agnes Blissful. Okay, let me see your wristband. Okay, what's the reason for your visit today? Well, I was in my bathroom and I kind of fell over my toilet and hurt my leg. Are you in any discomfort? Just a little. So on the pain level, pain scale from 0 to 10, with 0 being no pain at all and 10 being the worst pain ever, how would you rate your pain? About a 9. Okay, I'm going to go see the doctor about pain medications. I'll come back in a while. Alright. I will be measuring you for your crutches and I will teach you how to use them. First, don't lean on your crutches because pressure on the axilla increases risk to underlying nerves which can result in partial paralysis of the arm. Securely attach rubber tips to the crutches. Make sure crutch tips remain dry. Inspect tips and structure of the crutches to ensure tips aren't worn out or have any cracks or bends. There are various medical companies where you can obtain repairs, new tips, hand grips, and crutch pads. To adjust crutches, sometimes there are pre-measured heights, which makes it more efficient. If no pre-measured heights are given, measurements must be taken manually. In order to do this, client must be laying down on the bed, measuring three to four inches from axilla, to six inches laterally from the heel. If adjusted correctly, elbow should be slightly flexed at 30 degrees and three to four finger widths from axilla. Okay, I'm gonna help you use your new crutches today. First you have to get out of bed. The crutch stance is the tripod position. Crutches are placed 6 inches in front of each foot and 6 inches to each side of the foot. Depending on the client's situation, different crutch gates are used. In the four-point alternating gait, the client is given stability but requires weight bearing on both legs. Each leg is moved alternately with each opposing crutch. So, you move the right crutch, then the left leg, and move the left crutch, then the right leg. Move the right crutch, then the left leg, and move the left crutch, and then the right leg. In the three-point gait, the client is to bear all of the weight on one foot. The client bears weight on both crutches and then on the uninvolved leg. So the client moves both crutches, then the uninvolved leg. And then the client moves both crutches, and then the uninvolved leg. Two-point gait requires at least partial weight bearing on each foot. The client moves a crutch at the same time as the opposing leg. The client moves the right crutch with the left leg, then the left crutch with the right leg. Client moves right crutch with the left leg and then left crutch with the right leg. Paraplegics who wear weight supporting braces on their legs frequently use the swing through gait. Weight is placed on the supported legs and the client places the crutches one stride in front then swings to or through the crutches while they support the leg, the client's weight. Clients place both crutches in front and swings forward places both crutches in front, and swings forward. So clients should be positioned at the center front of the chair with posterior aspect of the legs touching the chair. Then the client holds both crutches in the hand opposite the affected leg or on the stronger side. With both crutches in one hand, client supports body weight on the unaffected leg and the crutches. While still holding crutches, client grasps the arm of the chair with the remaining hand and lowers his or her body into the armchair. And then to stand, the procedure is reversed. When going up and down stairs, the client should use the three-point gait. For going downstairs, body weight is on unaffected leg, 
body weight is transferred to crutches, then unaffected leg is aligned on stairs with crutches. When going upstairs, the weight is placed on the crutches. The weight is transferred from crutches to unaffected leg on stairs. Then the crutches are aligned with unaffected leg on stairs. The client holds the hand grips on the upper bars, takes a step, moves the walker forward, then takes another step, and then the device should be lifted up and forward. When using a cane, the cane length should be equal to the distance between the greater trochanter and the floor. We will be using the single straight-legged cane, but other types exist. The client should keep the cane on the stronger side of the body. The client should place the cane 6 to 10 inches forward, keeping body weight on both legs. Then, the weaker leg is moved forward to the cane so that the body weight is divided between the cane and the stronger leg. The stronger leg is then advanced past the cane so that the weaker leg and the body weight are supported by the cane and weaker leg. in front of the other and soon you'll be walking across the floor put one foot in front of the other